also I called over my contractor friend who I wish we could have hired for this project but he was unavailable um, and then he came over to look it over and we kind of came up with a game plan but when he first looked at it he was kind of eyeing it all and measuring and he goes this makes me want to puke which it kind of makes me want to puke too like it's a pain in the butt to level something at this stage and I didn't realize it was that significant and it's partly on me it's mostly on the GC's it's also just the way that it is with an old house and just something to deal with and that's part of what happens when you renovate old houses so it doesn't need to be perfectly level of course but we can't have our cabinets like wobbly and we don't want to feel seasick when we're walking in the kitchen so this is the plan. This flooring is all pretty good, but this area over here is where we have that slope. So the plan is to bring it up by just filling it in with other material. So I have some scrap pieces of the plywood. I went and bought some of the bigger sheets too, so we can use those. And then I'm also thinking that asphalt shingles would be a good um, underlayment because they're thin and they're kind of malleable and can be easily cut and like can kind of be shaped to feather from plywood to this plywood. We are going to work on tackling that um, underlayment and fixing that dip in the floor. I got a lot of messages from people telling me to use a self-leveler and believe me, I've thought it through and done a lot of research. The problem is a self-leveler is more of like a concrete and we are nailing in the wood flooring and so we can't nail through concrete. So the challenge with whatever we put down there needs to be something that's soft enough that it can with, you know, a nail can go through, but it's strong enough that it won't um, give over time. So wood is good. Um, the shingles could work, but we're going to just do a bunch of sheets of plywood and then maybe a little bit of shingles and then we're going to feather stuff in with another compound. We're TBD on exactly which compound we're going to use, but we're going to use one that's soft enough that it can go through and it can be sanded and can be kind of feathered out, but um, nails can go through. That's the kicker. So no concrete, no self-leveler. For prepping all of this, we've decided to remove all of these stupid roofing nails that they put in. So that's my job for today or for the next hour. Let's hope I can go fast. About 30 down and probably a million more to go. We think we might just pull up all of these so that that way when I go to install the flooring, I don't hit any of the nails when I'm installing the flooring. It's actually not as bad as I thought. figuring out where we need how many sheets of plywood. So I have two, two, two to here, and then one, 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 and then zero. So I'm marking and then just pivoting this as I go and making notes based on how level it is or not. And then hopefully that will kind of create like a shape and then we'll cut along that shape and then feather everything in with some filler and be in business. Tomorrow is a very exciting day. It is the beginning of drywall, which is going to completely transform the whole space. It's going to feel like a real room and not as much like a construction site. I'm so excited. <sighs> um, I'll give you a brief little look around and then tomorrow it's going to all get covered up. 
So I talked already about the insulation. Oh, hi, cat. Hello. You're not my cat. You wanna come in? Okay, okay bye. Alrighty, back to insulation. So I added all of the exterior insulation around um, the exterior walls. I do need to fill in some foam around the door. And then I'm going to put in exterior insulation into the dummy door after the guys are done using it. But it'll be helpful for them to be able to use that access to get in to do the drywall in the bathroom, of which I've added the soundproofing insulation in there and around here and in the closet and on the closet wall between the shower. I left this wall uninsulated because I'm going to do that in the middle of them doing insulation. I'm gonna, or doing drywall. I'm gonna let them put a sheet of drywall up here and then I can insulate it from the other side. And it's so much easier to fit it in there instead of trying to balance all the batting in between the studs without having like a surface to put them up against. Um, yeah, I just have to clean this out and we're good to go. I didn't insulate that because it doesn't really matter to us. It's just access into the dining room. And um, it's actually kind of nice to be able to hear people in the dining room. And we have all the original plaster over there. And so um, plaster is actually a pretty good insulator too for sound. So no big deal. Um, the, the pocket door, I haven't installed yet because I wanna put the pocket door framing on top of the finished floors. It'll be a lot easier for me to install the hardwoods without it. And it'll be a nicer, cleaner finish because um, you will kind of be able to see in a little bit. So I'm just gonna have them drywall after the fact. Um, they also are going to put drywall in this little vestibule framing. So today's to-do list is to break down Ross's drum kit and clean up the den. Since the walls are going to get closed up, now is my time to put my time capsule up there with the California cooler. Um, I decided that I wanna put more stuff in my time capsule. So instead of putting everything up there, I'm actually gonna put stuff up in this cavity here and you can actually access it from the attic. So I can keep adding to it over the years if I wanted to. Um, it does run the risk of it being removed by somebody else, but also the chances of someone finding it up there through the attic are probably higher than someone removing the drywall from behind a cabinet just hoping that people don't completely destroy the kitchen at some point. So anyway, all that to say, I'm gonna save the time capsule for later. I will update you on that. But in the meantime, before I seal this up, I wrote out a little thing about the California cooler and included our quarantine postcard and wrote a little note on the back. And then I will shove it up in there. just left and they got so much done today. I think if I had tried to do this, I would like still be unloading drywall by this time. Um, I'll show you around. The plan for today was for them to get started on drywall, but they finished hanging all of it, um, which is quite a feat because there was a lot to be done. This wall, for example, and this wall both got two coats or two layers of drywall. Um, to bring out the thickness of the original lath and plaster to meet up with the trim. And so there's two coats there that they did. We also had them um, put up the um, drywall on this wall with the intention of me coming in and insulating the other side of it. And at lunchtime, the guys were like, um, we actually just wanna finish hanging it today. Can we install the insulation for you? And I was like, um, okay, sure. And so they installed the insulation and then they put um, drywall on the other side of it too. So it is very exciting. The room feels 
humongous and I love it. I thought I would now give you a better lay of the land and also show you the bathroom, which I didn't show you yesterday because um, this is kind of confusing for some folks. This is the kitchen. There's gonna be, this is the dining room right here. There's gonna be cabinets and then there's gonna be a sink here and then more cabinets, lower cabinets, fridge, pantry, doors, lower cabinet with drawers, range with range hood, cabinets, and then a freestanding antique table, kind of like a peninsula bar situation right here. And then over here, this is a pocket door and it's gonna be here when it's closed and then when it's open, it's gonna slide behind a wall that we have yet to build. Um, and that's gonna go right there. And then that wall to this um, opening to the dining room, it's gonna be nice big pantry. The wall here is dividing our master bedroom closet. So on this side is gonna be a closet with the doors, and then this side is gonna be closet with doors. And so the cool thing is that when you step back, we have this mirrored opening, because remember there's gonna be a door right there, um, which is, I think it's gonna be really neat. I'm gonna be able to put some artwork there and it's gonna be a really pretty like view. And then this is gonna serve kind of like a hallway to the dining room in part because we have that table here. So it's gonna kind of feel divided. And then this will be a hallway. And then when you get into the vestibule, you can turn into the den, which is a nice big mess. And then into the rest of the, the house or you can go here into our bedroom, which is also a mess. This door is not going to be here at all. It's gonna be just an opening, and this is just gonna be an opening, and then this door is gonna to move to here. So this is really gonna be like master bedroom area because the closet and this vestibule is gonna be connected over here. So there's gonna be privacy from the master with this door, as well as with this pocket door that's gonna be right here. So um, I hope that makes sense. I've been getting a lot of questions about the vestibule and stuff and that is that. And then also as we back up down here, all of the doorways here line up and this will be kind of a nice little nook area, kind of recessed right here for the couch or bed or something like that. And then I'll show you the master bathroom. Out this way is where we used to access it through the dummy door, but they have since drywalled that off. So I hope that this now helps folks understand why this door is not gonna function. And instead, we're gonna get into the master bathroom. Can the old closet door in the master bedroom. And here we are. So we have this beautiful window and then the vanity is gonna go right here centered between these sconces, toilet and a shower. And that is the master bath. So this is where that dummy door is. <clears throat> and then here it'll just be like a towel hook or something. Our beautifully drywalled bathroom. Got some beautiful hot mop today. Um, I mentioned this to a few of my friends and I'm like, what's hot mop? And it's basically like a um, waterproofing that you can put in the bottom of a shower pan to have it all water sealed. You can buy a pan to put in there, but this is um, kind of like the tried and true method. And it's like this beautiful little um, black lake, um, but it smells horrible. So we've been airing out the house and then I just removed the door from the hinges so that we can get even more ventilation going on here. 